Welcome back to the channel everyone, this is Snoo, coming to you with a brand new League Start build guide for upcoming patch 3.21 Crucible League, featuring Poison Tornado Shot with Xerfi's Heart on the Pathfinder Ascendancy, which just underwent some exciting changes that happen to be quite favorable for the build you're about to see. Just like last time, we'll be utilizing the ever-powerful Soul Eater mechanic, increasing your attack and cast speed by 5% per nearby enemy killed. But rather than centering this build around Soul Thirst and its highly restrictive flask into gameplay, this time we're opting for Xerfi's Heart, an amulet which, as you can see, comes with its own unique set of challenges. Even though it's inconvenient, we can force our primary skill gem, Tornado Shot, to become an Agent of Chaos, thereby taking a full advantage of the synergies around Xerfi's Heart, as well as the game's current and still most overpowered damage archetype, Poison which consists of a two-pronged DPS calculation that double dips with percent increased damage modifiers. Unlike Ignite or Bleed damage, Poison damage can stack indefinitely, layering multiple instances of damage over time onto the same target, which means any increases to your speed of attack will directly translate into you doing a lot more DPS. This is what makes Poison as an ailment so exciting when paired with a mechanic like Soul Eater. And if that doesn't sound compelling enough, better hold on to your chair because I'm here to tell you that this is also a magic find build. That's right, a bona fide magic finding league start build. And no, not just for low tier content. What you're looking at right now is some of the hardest league mechanics stuffed into a juiced up T16 map, and it doesn't end there. This most unconventional league starter attempts to leverage the power of a high budget end game magic finding meta with the ease of the least gear-dependent, most scalable damage archetype to deliver on the best of both worlds. So get ready to make some serious currency. Some people might say it's impossible to produce a viable League Start Magic Find build capable of farming in-game content, but I assure you it can be done. That said, it's important to manage expectations. It should come to no surprise, this is not a beginner-friendly build. While bucking the meta in some ways, it still very much has the markings of a glass cannon magic finding boyer build. The pacing is quick, and random one shots are not just possible, but guaranteed to happen from time to time. While the damage remains most impressive, much in the way of the defenses had to be sacrificed in order to make the build work. So with that out of the way, if you like everything you've heard so far, I welcome you to continue watching as we dive into the build itself. For the record, every bit of gameplay you see in this video features a near-exact replica of the character represented in the Path of Building, which you can access in the video's description. Do keep in mind, the footage shown here is of the previous patch, just before the recent overhaul of the Pathfinder Ascendancy. We'll start by taking a close look at some of the numbers in Path of Building, followed by the passive skill tree, then a more in-depth explanation of some of the core skills and mechanics, as well as gear related to the build. After that, some gameplay strategy on how to best utilize your character for mapping content. Finally, some concluding thoughts relevant to the longevity of the guide. Now then, heading over to Path of Building. First, take note of the magic finding stats. 50% increase item quantity, 276% increase item rarity. Not bad, right? While certainly not representative of an all-in magic finding build, numbers like these will make a noticeable difference in the quality of drops across a variety of popular mapping strategies. It should then come to no surprise that the total life pool is a bit on the low end, and the amount of armor is mediocre at best. However, the effective hit pool is a far more important number and tells a slightly different story, because not all forms of defense were abandoned. Grace, along with other sources of evasion, puts us at a respectable three quarters chance to evade attacks. Spell suppression is capped while at full life and nearly capped otherwise, purely on account of the skill tree. Then there's the obligatory elemental resistance is capped, which we've managed to reach despite getting so little of it from gear. Even our chaos resistance is capped, which translates to a healthy chunk of physical damage reduction on account of one of Darkscorn's unique affixes. Further defensive support can be obtained by our Pantheon selection shown here in the configuration. And as usual, killing all bandits will be the way to go. The situation around recovery honestly couldn't be better. Recent changes to the Pathfinder Ascendancy and the skill tree, moreover, have resulted in some of the strongest forms of life recovery ever seen. More on that in a later section. Moving on to damage related stats. This is where the build really starts to shine. This character does far more baseline damage than any conventional low budget tornado shot build, such as the Soul Thirst Deadeye variant. 
10 arrows per attack, both from ballistas and self-cast, combined with in-combat buffs like Rampage, Onslaught, Unholy Might, Frenzy Charges, and more, results in the full DPS number sitting at a staggering 13 million plus. This is a testament to the vigorous scaling potential of poison damage. Looking at the configuration tab, you'll notice all the aforementioned buffs present in the damage calculation. However, surprise, surprise, the one buff responsible for the most ramp up damage is not even being calculated in. So observe the potent combination of poison damage stacking and soul leader buff stacking, resulting in absurd levels of damage scaling. The only weakness of poison damage is that it has a per target hard cap for which it cannot exceed under any circumstances. At this gearing threshold, you would have to reach an excess of 140 Soul Leader stacks within 20 seconds and in target dummy conditions to even have a chance at reaching the current poison cap of around 35 million DPS. For those of you interested in taking this build beyond its current gear threshold displayed in the POB, you'll be pleased to know you can get around the poison cap by reverting to a more hit-based chaos damage build by using a more straightforward, higher physical DPS weapon. When it comes to leveling poison damage based Pathfinder builds, one skill comes to mind above all the others, Poisonous Concoction. This notoriously popular skill gem makes for one of the most impressive leveling builds in the current meta and can take you all the way into red maps on nothing but a four link and a few scrap pieces of gear. Even with the recent patch changes that sought to provide some balance to the gem, it's still expected to be one of the most efficient ways to level at league start. So with keeping that in mind, Let's move on to the passive skill tree. It comes fully equipped with a leveling breakdown for Poisonous Concoction and subsequent transition into Poison Tornado Shot, once the necessary build enabling pieces have been acquired. While this is a league start guide for Poison Tornado Shot, Poisonous Concoction will have a lot more staying power than you might anticipate. As you can see by the current tree, you won't be expected to make the swap until somewhere around level 90. So best get some of the mandatory bossing content out of the way while you can, as Poisonous Concoction should outperform Tornado Shop pretty handily when it comes to that. If you're overly skeptical about the recent balancing changes affecting Poisonous Concoction, or if you're keen on using a skill that involves a weapon because of what the new league mechanic has to offer, feel free to go your own route. The final skill tree tab for Poison Tornado Shop features a character level to 95 with all campaign quests unlocked, with multiple cluster jewels and a gear set devoted to magic finding, ready to take on some of the hardest mapping content this game has to offer, including T16 Breach Lords, King Harbingers, and Legion bosses. Now then, let's examine the endgame skill tree more closely to get a better understanding of the mechanics that make this build come together. Pathfinder is a standout pick for patch 3.21 due to its recent surprise overhaul. Much conjecture about its new tree is currently taking place amongst members of the community and the overall sentiment is quite positive. Three of the four Ascendancy Notables we're taking were changed in a major way, so let's start with those. Nature's Reprisal arguably endured the biggest change. What once gave us some more chaos damage, area of effect, and chaos conversion, instead now bakes Withered straight into any build to an extent that likely surpasses the power granted from the original Notable. Nature's Adrenaline simply stole the old modifier from its neighbor, Nature's Boon, for better or worse. Either way, we're absolutely taking it to reach Master Surgeon, which used to be a reasonably good choice, but has suddenly become a total game changer for any Magic Find build. Can you believe the Pathfinder just became the only Ascendancy in the game that doesn't have to run Petrified Blood on a low life setup just to make proper use of a Divination Distillate Flask? It's true, Hybrid Flasks are indeed classified as Life Flasks. If you don't believe me, just take it up with my old friend, Heart of the Oak. The all-important phasing buff is granted one of two ways, either through the new suppression mastery or via 20% chance on kill thanks to two evasion and phasing small nodes toward the bottom left side of the tree. Because most of our damage is rooted in ailments, the keystone point blank is not worth taking for this build. Even with ailments being the focus of the build, accuracy is still important. Fortunately, there are lots of opportunities to grab the stat all along the ranger tree. We're almost able to hit hit cap, without even needing to invest into a precision gem. Quick Step, Intuition, Inveterate, Entrenched, and Revenge of the Hunted are all responsible for achieving up to 100% spell suppression entirely through the passive skill tree. Other critical notables include those dedicated to overcoming the steep attribute requirements, including Blood Siphon, Coordination, and Primal Spirit. Utmost Swiftness and its corresponding Mastery Point weren't needed, 
but are there for the taking if you ever find yourself in dire need of more attributes. Clever Thief will play a pivotal role in being our only source of life in Mana Leech, although it's unconfirmed just how important Leech is if we now get to have a hybrid flask that never stops running. And if that's not good enough, Chris Wilson himself has graced us with two brand new mastery skill points in the name of God Mode Recovery. But wait, there's more! A whopping 50% increased flask effect is obtained through several Pathfinder-specific and non-specific nodes on top of Alchemist Genius via Spike Concoction. Hitting this benchmark number results in not two, but three additional projectiles from Dying Sun, another Pathfinder specialty. And if you thought the poggers ended there, get this, the ranger tree just gained access to the adrenaline buff through a mastery skill point on the brand new multi-shot wheel, which was conveniently already going to be taken either way. Better log in while you still can. A surprising number of other powerful notables near the pathing of the skill tree were not taken on account of allocating cluster jewels, which are almost entirely dedicated to doing more damage. Incidentally, cluster jewels are more of a luxury than a necessity with this build. So if you're intimidated by the thoughts of having to fit two premium rolled medium clusters into an eight passive large chaos cluster, don't be. Refer back to the Tornado Shot Respect Skill Tree tab for a sense of direction on how to best manage an endgame tree without using a multi-cluster setup. Moving on to core skills and mechanics, let's begin with the gems. Tornado Shot will be our primary attack. It starts with a single arrow fired directionally at your cursor pointer. Then it splits into three additional projectiles, shooting in any direction, or four with the preferred helmet and chant. Upon hitting an enemy, those same three or four projectiles will then chain up to two additional times, thanks to us using a chain support gem. In total, with this setup, just one arrow can produce up to 13 successful attack hits, and our build shoots 10 thanks in part to greater multiple projectile support. And all that's not even including the complementary Focus Ballista 6 link with Culling Strike, responsible for doing about a third of our total damage. The remaining support gems exist solely to increase our poison damage, resulting in a very expensive Tornado Shot cost of 45 mana that would be borderline unplayable if not for an Eldritch Implicit and Flask Suffix combo reducing the cost all the way down to 16 mana. Speaking of poison damage, Plague Bearer is included as a means of adding a modest amount of free passive damage over time so long as you're willing to keep track of it. Something that won't need any tracking is Blood and Sand, to be used on cooldown for the highest possible adrenaline uptime. Blood Rage is responsible for granting us frenzy charges and even more increased attack speed. Blink Arrow will be our movement skill of choice. It works particularly well with high amounts of cast speed, for which you'll have plenty, thanks to, you guessed it, Soul Eater. Immortal Call, linked to a cast when damage taken support, is especially strong for this build, since we're already taking numerous increased skill effect duration nodes, alongside Darisol's Defiance, with its iconic endurance charge uptime. This build manages to fit in two major auras, one Herald, as well as Blood and Sand, which was already explained a moment ago. Purity of Elements grants us immunity to elemental ailments and boosts all elemental resistances, which makes it a popular go-to for magic finding builds that cannot really afford room for these stats on gear. Grace is the defensive aura of choice for this ranger build, as it synergizes very well with the endurance charge interaction between Darisol's Defiance and Immortal Call, but could actually be swapped out for a Malevolence Gem if you wanted to full-on embrace Glass Cannon play. Herald of Purity provides a significant boost to our damage and comes with the added bonus of helping us reach the poison hit cap. With Xerfi's Heart at the center of the build, it's imperative that we incorporate a Val skill gem which has reasonably good uptime. In this case, the most sensible choice is Val Haste, which offers a nice bonus to movement and attack speeds, greatly assisting with the initial ramping process. Some interesting alternatives come to mind though, such as Val Molten Shell or even Val Breach despite both having longer cooldowns. Sniper's Mark and its corresponding support gem Mark on Hit are not present, despite being a staple of most Tornado Shot builds. In the case of Poison Damage, however, Temporal Chains offers a much greater benefit and will be obtained on Hit through gear. And that brings us to our next topic of discussion, the gear. We'll kick it off with Xerfi's Heart, the item responsible for the conception of this build. It was chosen because it's one of the only deterministic ways of getting Soul Eater into a build. The increased attribute requirements, while painful, only really impact strength in a major way. It comes with a surprising amount of flat chaos damage, as well as a unique modifier, transforming chaos critical strikes into all three elemental ailments spread equally. 
Early on with the build, our ailment damage will vastly outweigh our hit damage, but this is subject to change with upgraded gear down the line. For now, we can expect minimum thresholds of each ailment to be met. Unfortunately, Freeze was not included on the line. It should be mentioned that Freeze is an extraordinarily underrated defensive layer most often utilized in more conventional Tornado Shot builds, but sadly, we won't be getting it. At least not until we pick up Expedition's End, a very rare and potentially very expensive body armor. For our budget, we'll have to go with an alternative. The chest slot is surprisingly flexible with perfectly viable options like Cherubim's Maleficence, Dendrobate, or the Covenant as a higher budget pick. In our case, Darisol's Defiance should prove very strong for its huge flat armor and evasion role, its increased onslaught effect, and most notably as a means to bring endurance charges into the build. Dark Scorn is a rare but typically unpopular unique bow, and a perfect fit for a physical to chaos conversion bow build that focuses primarily on poison damage scaling. Of all the items subject to meta pricing fluctuations, this one would be the one to look out for. Ming's Heart will play an integral part in the build as well by helping us reach Chaos Resistance cap, taking full advantage of Dark Scorn's powerful defensive modifier, as well as granting a staggering amount of damage, especially when catalysted. 25% reduced maximum life is a wicked downside, but the extreme upsides win favor nonetheless. Asenus Gentle Touch can be a bit on the pricey side. It's an absurdly strong item for this build, as it grants us temporal chains on hit, causing our poison effects to last much longer, and it grants us Corpse Explosion, helping to chain clear large monster packs while also eliminating their on-death effects. You'll have a hard time finding a more impactful pair of gloves. The remaining unique items are dedicated magic finding pieces and give serious bang for their buck. They include Gold Worm for its high quantity roll, Bisco's Leash for the quantity roll and rarity roll through unlocking Rampage, and Ventor's Gamble, for which you can likely purchase a halfway decent one early in the league before the majority of players have even begun thinking about magic finding. This leaves you with the Helmet, the Quiver, as well as a few cluster and basic jewels to sort out the remainder of your resistances and attribute requirements. These are example items taken from the character shown in the footage of this video. None of them are particularly expensive or difficult to match. Be on the lookout for decent fractured bases. Projectile speed is a most underrated stat for Tornado Shot in that it can extend the lifespan of an arrow by allowing it to chain more times against distant targets. If crafting is your game, you'll want to spam cheap essences of contempt on the quiver and pray for a plus one arrow roll, if not already fractured that way. For the helmet, cheap essences targeting a specific stat you're really lacking is smart. The cluster jewels can be purchased or fossil spammed for targeted chaos rolls. Basic jewels have a wide array of useful and useless rolls, so it's probably best if you just purchase them outright from trade, where you might even find one that comes with a Corrupted Blood Immunity implicit. Here's some good news. Because we didn't opt for Soul Thirst, we get to have whatever flasks we want. Two of them, Divination Distillate and a Magic Gold Flask, are there for the obvious reason of aggressively boosting magic finding stats. The Silver and Quicksilver Flask are all about increasing speed, and they come equipped with suffix modifiers that are extremely beneficial to the build. And then there's Dying Sun, for which the Pathfinder reaps more benefit than any other class on account of it granting us a third projectile. The overall gearing requirement for pulling off this build without sacrificing magic find stats is incredibly tight. If you can manage to cap your elemental and chaos resistances, meet the necessary gearing gem attribute and reservation requirements, hit 10 million DPS on the sheet while clearing 3k life and doing all that using the recommended magic find gear pieces equipped, you've most definitely passed the test. All right, let's talk gameplay strategy. With Xerfi's heart equipped, when you use a Val skill, it grants the Soul Eater buff for exactly 20 seconds. After such time has passed, all accumulated Soul Eater buff stacks and the buff itself are lost. Using the Val skill again will initiate the Soul Eater buff once more, but only if the original copy has completely run its course. If you use a Val skill within 20 seconds of the previous cast, it will neither extend nor reset the ongoing Soul Eater buff, which means you'll have to suffer through its cooldown and soul gain prevention timers before your next opportunity to get back on track. This means, depending on how frequently your Val skill is up, you may wish to track this timer for the sake of increasing your Soul Eater buff uptime. 
Broadly speaking, Soul Eater is a mechanic that promotes swift action gameplay, giving you ever-increasing clearing efficiency the more monsters you kill in a short window. It's important to remember that Soul Eater requires you to be close to your kill targets in order to work. It has a predetermined range of 70 units in-game, which is roughly half a screen's width. League mechanics that result in spawning large packs of monsters in tight quarters are especially suited for this playstyle. Such mechanics include, but are not limited to, Strongbox, Breach, Ritual, Blight, and even Harvest. Beyond this, it's imperative that you're not only able to clear quickly, but also move quickly from one area of the map to the next. Out of combat movement speed may feel a bit lacking, but in combat you'll be zoom zooming like nobody's business thanks to Val Haste and Rampage, alongside pairing a silver and quicksilver flask together in conjunction with all of Pathfinder's signature flask enhancements. Oh, and we can't forget about Adrenaline, now tied to stance swapping. Yay! Whether anomalous or not, Blood and Sand is now definitely worth using. And by using, I mean never stop triggering it. Hope you don't mind a healthy dose of spam clicking. But in case you do, you can substitute Blood and Sand for Defiance Banner at the exact same reservation cost, and then swap the Attack Mastery skill point in for a Reservation Mastery skill point to get some damage back that way. Beyond all of that, the mapping experience for this build is actually quite simple. When facing off against enemies that survive longer than a second, drop up to three ballistas prior to engaging. Fire away and smile as you watch an incalculable number of arrows flying around your screen, ping-ponging in all directions at once. When it comes to bossing, just know that Poisonous Concoction will undoubtedly outperform the final iteration of this build, mainly on account of survivability and resource cost issues. I do not recommend trying to boss your way to Atlas completion with Tornado Shot. As previously stated, it's recommended to get as much bossing out of the way as you can prior to making the swap. Let Tornado Shot do what it does best. So if you're up for breaking the mold by League starting a low budget magic finding build that's more than capable of blasting maps, then this might be the right build for you. Every map ran as footage for this video was 8 mod corrupted using the following scarabs and sextants on an Atlas passive skill tree specced deep into Breach, Legion, and Harbinger with the Eater of Worlds influence. Just imagine, all that currency for the taking. Despite this being a unique heavy build, most if not all the items featured in it aren't exceedingly rare or expensive. Meta shifts aside, they should be easily obtainable on a low budget, putting you in good standing for beginning the pursuit towards your next major upgrade, like the undisputed best build in the whole game. The notes section of the guide contains even more detailed information pertaining to the build, such as leveling tips, when to make the swap to Tornado Shot, and specific examples of how to go about upgrading the build well beyond the budget of this League Starter build guide. One last reminder, every bit of footage shown in this video was a precise representation of the gear and spec found in the path of building, which served as a blueprint for the making of this guide. It should go without saying, results may vary depending on the user as well as the user's specs, if you're setting out to follow this build in 3.21, then good luck. In the event future changes to the game take place that significantly impact the performance of this build, expect an update addressing these changes in the description of the video. If you have any questions, please ask them in the comments section. A great deal of work went into the creation of this guide, so please like and subscribe if you wish to see more related PoE content. In the meantime, you can find me on Twitch live streaming this build in action and others like it. Whether you decide to take this build on or not, I sincerely hope this video was of some benefit to you. Thank you for watching, and good luck out there in Rayclast.